I'm Joy Morris, inviting you to listen to true stories of the Wild West, hosted by C.R. King, a production of RK Enterprises. Hi, C.R. King here. Hello, everybody. Well, you're in for a treat, because today I want to talk about streets, the names of streets. Now, as a child, I often wondered where these names came from. I figured maybe they were from developers naming their streets after their kids, their wives, their families. But surprisingly, when you start to investigate the communities you live in, especially an older one like Los Angeles, which was established in the 1700s, you'd be surprised how much history is behind these streets. So today I'm going to give you a sampling. I hope you enjoy it. Sit back and uh, let's talk. As one enters Los Angeles from the east on the freeway, the San Bernardino Freeway to be exact, the first street you'll see is Venice. Well, that street was once a dirt road which bordered a vineyard. It was the very first vineyard in all of Los Angeles. And yes, they had a lot of them at one time. The, it was approximately 100 acres of grapes which was sandwiched between the LA River and this particular dirt road. The owner was Jean Louis Vanesse. He was the pioneer and he was a very important man in his time. Now, right down the street, the freeway there. The next street is Aliso, A-L-I-S-O, which is the Spanish name for Sycamore. There's a huge Sycamore Street right in front of the Hacienda. Thus the name stuck as also. Now we have another street called San Pedro Street. It's very large. It's long. It was the natural path for settlers to take to the harbor of San Pedro. The street is still, still known as San Pedro Street and it still covers the very same trail that was established way back, way, way back in history. Now, where there are streets that are functional, like I said, San Pedro, Pedro is one of them. There is Mission Road. Mission Road is the early trail in which the first settlers of the Pablo de Los Angeles traveled from Mission, from the Mission of San Gabriel, to the what is now considered Los Angeles Basin, to downtown Los Angeles. In fact, this was the main road into the Los Angeles Basin. The street has been in existence since 1781, and yes, it's still the same path as it was back then. Think about that, 1881. In the late, in the late 1840s, Los Angeles needed to survey its town. So they hired Lieutenant Edward Ord. O-R-D. He was stationed in Monterey. They hired him. They paid him. They brought him in to Los Angeles. And he surveyed all of, all of the streets. He was allowed to name one street on his own. And that street was La Primavera. He had a girlfriend. Her name was Trinity Ortega. Well, he named it after her. And it would become later known in 18, 1850, actually, as Spring Street. There was another woman, a very beautiful woman. But her name was Arcadia, Arcadia Bandini. She was considered the most beautiful lady of, his day, of her day. She married, at the age of 14, to one of the most respectful men of his time, Abel Stearns who was a trader. He owned a warehouse at San Pedro Harbor. He owned the Rancho Los Alamitos. He wound up buying three more rancheros, which is now Orange County. He owned the Long Beach, and he and his bride would walk down the beach at night, hand in hand. That's the term, Long Beach. Oh, wow. Isn't that history? Isn't it grand? Abel was very ugly, and he was 43 years of age. Again, she was 14. 
and he was extremely rich. They say that the young bucks in those in that time were, were extremely disappointed. Now, Abel was also known for being a smuggler. And during the 1850s, he was the chairman of the Vigilance Committee. That's right, vigilantes. They, they, they took people out and they hung them, but whatever. Okay. He was also one of four men who represented the Los Angeles at the State Constitutional Convention. Another man was Andre Pico. Extremely interesting. This guy was the last general who fought the Mexicans, who fought the Americans and surrendered to John C. Fremont. Now, he joined the Americans. He understood. So the next street is Temple Street. It was named after Juan Temple. Now, Juan Temple was an Anglo-Saxon who came to California at a very early time. He adapted into the Hispanic culture, and he became known as Juan Temple. He was a merchant, a leading merchant of the time, at, the, at that time. He owned what is called the Temple Block, which is where City Hall stands today. And where, before that, it was the Indian Village. That's where they were, where the City Hall stands today. Now, Temple decided to build a permanent sidewalk. He laid down all these bricks and what have you, and then he covered the bricks with tar from the Brea tar pits. It was a great sidewalk, but only during the winter months. Summertime, that tar became gooey and gummy, and people's feet or shoes were being stuck in it, and it was a terrible, terrible mess. <laughs> so that's Juan Temple. There was a street. It was called charity, but their pre the residents did not like the idea that they lived on charity. Notice, live on charity? Anyway, so they changed it to Grand, which is downtown LA. Now Los Angeles had, some people call it a ditch, a mother ditch, the Zanzar where the water would come from the trench they built from the Los Angeles River right down the middle of Los Angeles with all these little uh, smaller streams going out. It was the main water source for the city. Well, they filled that in during the mid-19th century, and it became known as Los Angeles Street. Jose Figueroa died two years after he assumed office in 1833 as the Mexican governor of California. He had been considered the best Mexican governor of them all. He was a little controversial because he also lived with his mistress. But in honor of his name, of his abilities, the street by the name of Pearl Street was renamed Figueroa. Figueroa Boulevard, it's huge. It goes right down. Well, all these streets are real large. Anyway, um, Figueroa was Pio Pico's best man when he married Maria Alvarado. Their wedding ceremony lasted eight days and eight nights. Now, Pio Pico was considered the last Mexican governor. He also had served as temporary governor on several occasions. Now, many in modern times think he is the most respected Mexican of them all in early Mexico, or early California, I should say. However, his brother, Andre, was the last uh, general of the Mexican army that fought and lost and surrendered to John C. Fremont. He was even more respected. He was also, as I had mentioned, at the State Constitution Convention. Both Anglo-Saxons and Mexicans alike loved this man. Going back to his brother Peel, his older brother Peel Pickle, he built the most lavish 
hotel in all of early Los Angeles. It's called the Pickle House. The Pickle House. It's still there. It's still standing at the plaza. Okay. Now, i got to let you know that all of these streets at one time were Spanish-named, and they were all changed when the it became Americanized when the Anglo-Saxon people moved in after California won statehood. Cala, Cala Peninsula was later named Main Street. F Fort Street was the street that went to Fort Moore. Cala de El Toro, or the Street of the Bull, was named such because that's where the bull ring ended. It became Hill Street. And then Pearl Street, as I had mentioned, which became Figueroa Street, was once called Grasshopper Street because of the thousands of grasshoppers there. And then you have other streets, such as, oh, Selma in Hollywood, or Wilcox in Hollywood. Wilcox was a man that that subdivided his land. And this was the land that was being sold under the name of Hollywood. Selma was a little girl that walked across his property to go to school. He loved these little kids. There's a couple of them named that way. Hobart Street, Whitley Street, the, the, the founder of, of uh, Hollywood. And Arcadia, I mentioned, there's a town called Arcadia. People, if you study your history, if you study streets and dig into it, it's incredible. And you will be like me. You'll have more pride in where you live than you've ever had before. Thank you for your time, everybody. Have a good day. Be safe. Stay tuned for next week's tale.